Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from Bank of America and Perfect Building Maintenance, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, New York Community Bank, Kilroy Metal Products, New York's Window Company, Capital One Bank. Additional funding for this program is made possible by grants from Akron Gold Brothers, LLC, Briarwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, F.J. Siami, Friedman, LLP, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, James D. Kuhn, Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Madison Realty Capital, Meridian Capital Group, M&T Bank, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Must Development, Newmark Knight Frank, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Des Moines Group, Urban American, W Financial Mortgage Fund. Hello, my name is Michael Stoller. There's this place, they call it New Jersey. It's across the, the, the river, you know, and there are people who live there. You know, there's highly contentious, you know, uh, governor, you know, governor campaign. But, you know, it's a place that I used to live, used to work, um, and it's a nice place. But we don't know what's happening in New Jersey. So today I've assembled this group of uh, four distinguished individuals who are going to give us their views on what's happening in their state, New Jersey. My guests today include Gary Gabriel, Executive Vice President of Cushman and Wakefield of New Jersey. Uh, Robert Ambrosi, uh, the President of um, ARC uh, Properties. Another Stolar, but it's not spelled right. Brian Stolar, Principal President of the Pinnacle Companies. And last but not least, uh, Part of the 800-pound gorilla, but he's not 800-pound gorilla. Ron Liddell, vice president of Avalon Bay Communities. So I, you know, nobody would understand what 850-pound gorilla. What's Avalon Bay Communities? Well, Avalon Bay, as you know, Michael, is a REIT. We're a New York Stock Exchange S&P 500, and we're large. And you know, we have 180 communities, about 50,000 apartment homes on the East Coast, the West Coast, and Chicago. But we like to think, and I think we are nimble, and we have regional offices in all those locations. We try to understand what goes on in that particular situation, and I'm responsible for the New Jersey development. So nimble, nimble New Jersey, what's going on? What are you doing in New Jersey? Uh, well, we're doing better than most, which is not anything we're proud of per se, but it shows, I think, long-time planning, good balance sheet appropriateness over the time, and now have opportunities where we probably didn't have any other time. Condominium developers have shaken out completely. Now, for, for my audience, basically Avalon Bay only builds rental housing. Yes, that is correct. So the condominium the for sale developers, for a whole host of reasons, really aren't competitive for land anymore. A lot of the small private developers have faced a lot of difficulties. We have some of those clearly. Rents are down, and we know vacancies are challenging, and it's all about jobs, which we'll talk about later, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, we have a high barrier to entry strategy. And it's been proven out that in a New Jersey or a California or Connecticut or Boston, it's difficult to get approvals like it is in New Jersey. We're happy to be there. We've been there 23 years at this point. And now for the first time, and I've been there about seven years, I'm actually getting calls without me making the phone calls from mayors, from uh, developers that haven't made a go out of it in this particular project. And we're potentially going to be some white knight opportunities going forward. So, you know, for, for my audience purposes, I have three developers, and then I have, I don't, I, I don't want to make you feel good. I, I have really one of the kings of investment sales in New Jersey and other places, but you do most of New Jersey. Um, a, as a developer, uh, Bob, you know, and, and uh, Brian, how hard is it to do development in New Jersey? I think New Jersey is one of the most difficult states in the country. I mean, Brian, I think you'll agree with me. Is We've it? developed in a number of states, and between the um, the environmental the environmental restrictions, the uh, transportation requirements, the, home um, rule. the what do you mean by home rule? Every municipality is basically in charge of what yeah. we do. Yeah. yeah. Why you you don't believe that happens in New York? 
And I think in New York, if you have zoning for a particular property or a lot, you can pretty much move forward on that zoning. In New Jersey, that's sort of the beginning. The only good news is that because of all these problems we faced, there's not as many problems in New Jersey as there are elsewhere. Yeah, but because that helps there's you. Very little inventory. <laughs> you know, there are, there's limited inventory because yeah. there's you don't build because it's everybody's a real creating. Yeah. Now, but you know, people know you know that there are certain cities of New Jersey, you know, um, that that we've heard of. Okay, you know, we we've heard of uh, Newark. Everyone has you know it's been pro and con, uh, mostly con until maybe Cory Booker now on a, on a pro situation, and then you know. Not too far from your office, the Meadowlands. Everybody knows that Jimmy Hoffa may be buried there, <laughs> but you know the, the Meadowlands, and you know because they watch a Giant game, uh, and so they think of Secaucus. They have no idea where the Meadowlands is, but you have this thing called Xanadu. What's happening with Xanadu? At the moment, not much. They say sometimes in developments, uh, it's not necessarily the initial developer that will make the money. Maybe it's the second person in the queue that will make the dollars. It might be the third one on Xanadu. <laughs> At the moment, uh, Xanadu is uh, closed uh, okay. before it opened, mm. effectively. Bob, you know, you, you and I were talking before uh, about Newark. Yes. Um, and, and you said, to d you know, uh, for many years, you've been in business over 30 years, you know, you wouldn't have gone to Newark, but today you might have a, an idea in going into Newark. Well, it's funny. I've, I've always had high hopes for Newark. Especially since you went to college. I you did. Know, I went you to went college to undergraduate in Newark. I, I used to say to my real estate professor, one day Newark's going to work. I've been waiting for that day. <laughs> it's like an economist. They're never wrong. It's only the timing. You know, things will turn around, but when? Uh, but I think the one thing that Newark hasn't captured that a lot of other cities have captured, an example is Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia, for example, you have Drexel and Wharton. And that's really acted as a as a, a catalyst for the development of the city. Uh, Newark has not been able to utilize NGIT or the medical school or Rutgers. I mean, but or Newark, Seton Hall but, but Neek, to really Newark act has as a all this. I mean, you have all that. You have you have the uh, the PAC. You yeah. have a, a I think it's ready. Stadium. I think it's ready. I think it's ready. like individual assets that for some reason. Yeah don't seem to have been able to be connected. But they could be ready. The and momentum may be. be there. You know, things reach a point of. Uh, of, of, of sliding, you know, or tilt. When something tilts, all of a sudden the object slides off or slides down or whatever you want to say. But, you know, but I think it's getting there. I really do. Now, but let's, let's get on another thing. You said you're building in Jersey City. Yes. You're planning to build. And you, you've gone to Jersey City. I mean, people know that there's a path in Jersey City. I don't know what else there is in Jersey City besides the path. New York. But no, no. <laughs> I mean, but, you, you know, there are other items. What's happening? You have this property called Mandalay? Yeah, we have a project, uh, Mandalay on the Hudson. Actually, the first development we did on the waterfront, I did in 1985 when it was somewhat of a uh, pioneer move. But now it's very, very mature. And Mandalay on the Hudson actually started off as a rental building in its former life. And the gentleman to my right over here, his firm Avalon Bay, built it. And uh, we bought it to convert to condominiums, which we did. We only have about 10% of the units left. So over the last almost three years, we've sold out almost 250 units. People want to be there because it's convenient. It's close to New York. Now, it's now right by the river. And you have it's a great place to be. You have another <coughs> property uh, that you're working on in uh, Jersey City. Yeah, we're a partner with uh, uh, Lester Fisher and his family. There's a project directly next to Mandalay. It's even closer to the water. When we bought Mandalay, uh, Avalon gave us a right of first refusal on this little piece of property. So I'm not really sure what it's for. It's so small, but as it turned out, we were able to build a very tall tower. We opened up for sales about six months ago, and it's actually doing very well. Now, uh, I'll throw the question to you, because uh, uh, you, you, do, you do investment sales of both commercial and residential properties. What's happening with regard to the office market in Jersey City on in the investment sales basis? Investment sales, I mean, I, I don't want to refer to Jersey City necessarily as an oligopolistic market necessarily, but there's a select few owners that are down there. So in the best of markets from the standpoint of velocity, Jersey City sees relatively few trades because much of the inventory is controlled by either Matt Cali uh, or up the way 
uh, as you know. Uh, SJP. Uh, uh, well, it's not even SJP. They're in uh, in uh, in Hoboken, just up the way, and for the left moment for the left racks. Right. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Control most of the balance. So there's probably a but handful the, of so other buildings. But let's buildings. talk maybe Jersey City, Hoboken, because that's what people know. I mean, you know, Jersey City has become an alternative, and they were able to uh, attract a lot of the New York City. Uh, properties, you know, in the 90s, and people went there because of the incentives. And I believe as late as uh, yes, this month, I. this month, with Depository Trust moving yes. over from New York uh, to Jersey City, you know. At a substantial because, cost uh, to New Jersey taxpayers, but yes, that, mm -hmm. is, that, is, that is true. I'm very happy yes. that all you living in New Jersey and having your, your taxes paid for this. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jersey City overall and the waterfront in general from an office perspective was one of the only markets in New Jersey that benefited from what went on in Manhattan. And in fact, as you said, the market grew up in the early 1990s uh, and was extremely active both before and after 9-11, as the case may be. A lot of long-term leases, large financial institutions, velocity is obviously Yeah, but like slower. Goldman Sachs never even moved into their building. Uh, they're substantially occupying that building. There is availability within the building, but again, it's user-owned and occupied from our perspective, so it doesn't really hit the stats. Uh, generally speaking, from an availability standpoint, directly, it's a competitive marketplace, single-digit availability rate versus the rest of the state, which is 18.6% in terms of vacancy overall. So it's, it is a healthy so wh market. Why, why would anybody buy an office building in New Jersey? I mean, Bob said to me before the show, he said it's not worth it because nobody makes money. I mean, y your rents in J New Jersey and the other parts are the same the same rent that they were 20 years ago. I mean, and your taxes are up and your expenses, I mean, they're not like Avalon Bay, the, the gorilla over here. You know? Depending upon where one seems to believe we are in the cycle, owning, selling, operating office buildings works well with the cycle. If you happen to be in the wrong part of the cycle, where perhaps some that bought in 05, 06, and 07 might be, those that would buy now probably find themselves in a fortuitous position. Uh, a few years but down you, the road. But you know, you bring up a good thing. Where are we in the cycle, Mr. Stolar? Well, it depends on where. Mm. If you're talking in New Jersey, which is a unique place, as right. you said. Totally agree. Uh, I'm it, talking. This is a yeah. show in New it Jersey. It varies tremendously. You know, one of the reasons we're all on the waterfront is it is so unique. We have a project, I think the largest project on the waterfront, the Maxwell House Coffee Factory with Toll Brothers, and that was 14 acres. And we sell well there. The retail is starting to take off. If you move back 15 miles away from the water, it's a completely different story. I think in general, we've definitely hit the bottom. I would tell you that in every project we have, we have four that we're selling right now in uh, Essex County and in Hudson and in, um, well, they're both in Hudson, Hoboken, Jersey City. Our sales in the last three months are triple what they were for the three months before, uh, and, and certainly the first three months, they were almost nothing. We're hearing that from a lot of other folks, but it's more for what's unique, what's special, or what's advantage pricing. So what's advantage pricing? If it's in Montclair where we're building, it's say $500,000 for a residential unit, and on a retail basis, it's probably $30 a foot or something like that. In the waterfront area, it could be a little bit higher because you're comparing to New York. So they got the benefit of having that comparison. But overall, I definitely think we fit the bottom. Huh? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, New Jersey is also very different because unlike a lot of other states where the road networks are more in a grid, right. um, New Jersey has, 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 I don't know, it's an odd road system. So there aren't as much nodes to deal with. There's isolation. There's really isolation and you can, you can, you can find opportunities in each node, which is pretty unique to the state. And being so close to New York and being part of the Boston Washington corridor, uh, it's, it's always been very stable. I agree with Brian. I mean, we're mostly in retail and residential, and we've seen both pick up over the past six months. Yeah, but, but you bring up the, the subject the, of retail. Retail, urban retail <coughs> in New York is a great market. It's yeah. still a great market because there's a limited amount of space and so on. I mean, his company, Avalon Bay, when they built uh, in the, on the Bowery, you know, has done fantastic with the urban retail, and urban retail just does well. Jersey, even though it's urban, the retail has been a lot. I mean, on Route 18, I believe the vacancy is like 22 percent. Yeah, but what, what's, you got to qualify the vacancy. You know, the prime corners. I mean, what's happening, it's interesting what's happening in retail. The local tenants are having a problem. There's no question about it. There's some shakeout on the local tenants. On the major tenant end, um, existing properties leased to major tenants, they're looking for bargains. However, if they want to get into a location, they'll pay a premium. 
for the right for the right spot. Okay, for the right spot. So if we have a corner, if we have a corner that's not been developed, okay, and it's a brand new opportunity, we'll get a fair market rent. Yet, if there's an existing product in the market, um, you know, they're looking for the discount. So it's a very odd market right now. But that'll so, fill. I mean, that so will fill. New Jersey's a very healthy market. Yeah, but let, let's bring this up with, with regard to, you know, tenants and other things. Are tenants, you know, are residential tenants getting a better rent opportunity because of this recession? Today, uh, has, has Avalon Bay uh, adjusted their rents? Are they giving one, one to two months free rent? Yes, yes, and depends is the answer to those three questions you just asked me. <laughs> evasive, um, evasive, and more evasive. Uh, there is a flight to quality. Avalon Bay is a quality developer. We have quality products. So residents that were not able to potentially afford some of the rents that we had in the past can certainly afford us right now. Some cases they may be doubling up, providing additional opportunities. In other cases, New York, which has dropped quite a bit, now New Jersey becomes more attractive in many ways. Um, so all of that is true and all that still occurs. Uh, I'm not sure I agree 100% on the retail side. I think there's still pressures, but what we feel the pressure is much more on a macro level. And we're talking about New Jersey, we'll get to, but for us it's about jobs. When 7.2 million jobs have been lost since December 2007, the beginning of the recession, it's hard to move rents on a going forward positive basis. Uh, and that, frankly, and there's news every day, and the show is published on, or comes out on a regular basis, that continues, 9.8% unemployment, until you start seeing... But unemployment is even worse, because well, it's, it's a 15, shadow. It's 15, you know, 16%. You know, you're really at that. Clearly it's higher. that. Yeah. But, you know, I think economists would agree that until you start seeing positive GDP, which maybe will happen this quarter, maybe not, probably three quarters later, maybe four, you'll see sustained positive job growth. Until that occurs, there's going to be situations which are challenging. They're going to be some opportunistic. I think Bob's absolutely correct, though. The node markets of New Jersey, and whether and we've talked a little bit about, Michael, as you know, you brought up Newark, you brought up Jersey City. You know, New Jersey native, I actually have a graduate degree from a school in Newark, too, and a school in New Brunswick, by so the way. He? Both yeah. Rutgers, I should put uh, on. But New Jersey is much more than that. For 8.8 .8 million people, it's not about just the six borough in Jersey City or the urban centers, which are very valuable along the river. It's for the most part, a suburban state. Correct. And whether it's Marstown or New Brunswick or Cherry Hill, if you want to go down to the Philadelphia market, that's what has driven New Jersey for years. That's what continues to drive it. And that's the attractiveness. It's the good schools. It's the recreation. It's the open space. And frankly, there are some things being done in New Jersey to spur on economic growth that I, as a developer for a long time, haven't seen. And I'll give you one example. There's a license site uh, professional remediation bill that came out and has been adopted. In essence, what it's doing, it's a triple play in my mind. It has 20, we have 20,000 brownfield sites. Historical manufacturing has been there for a long time. There's no ability from the DEP to clean up those sites. So what Governor Corazine and the legislature did is said, look, we're going to allow you with certain requirements to hire an engineer, a private engineer, to facilitate that redevelopment. What are the aspects of it? It cleans up the sites a lot quicker, keeps government small. We're not hiring people to do that, and it's a stimulus plan. Those are the types of things, and they've happened quite a bit, I think, in New York, that are now happening even before some of the things in New Jersey. I think I, finally I, the economic stimulus is beginning to occur. I, I think New Jersey has been more economic stimulus uh, than New York in many aspects. I mean, the, 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 in New York City, the, the real stimulus has been in residential. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there was other stimulus with regard to certain offices, you know, Times Square and certain other areas. But New York has never been overly mm. uh, helpful. I, I mean, would say I don't think, that, Michael, that Jersey really has been. In <coughs> certain, to Ron's certain point, hubs. Certain, certain hubs. hubs. Jersey City than, has right. been up. But more in the, it's, it's in the business of picking winners and losers at the moment. Yeah, but now it's really starting to pick up. And another example, I think, that towards the point that Ron raised about the, uh, the uh, professionals, is now they've passed in this new bill that went uh, through this summer. You have state universities, which you talked about a few times. They have land. You've never been able to develop that land with private investment. So one of the aspects of this bill was to permit that. We're working uh, in, in Montclair, something that we've, we've done with Gary on a, a student housing mixed-use project. All of a sudden, we find out that the university uh, is also, the state university that's there, Montclair State, is also working on a project on their property. So now they have twice the opportunity, one that they could do with us off-site, that's a mixed-use project, and one they can do on campus. If you start looking at all the colleges around the state, even possibly Newark, yeah. and you're opening up the possibility of low cost or possibly even no cost land. You know, those are the types of stimulus things we've never seen in New Jersey before. And from an energy but, but, perspective but, but as well, yet, they're pushing New, hard. Yet New Jersey has, you know, 
when I lived in New Jersey and operated some businesses in New Jersey, New, New Jersey was the pharma capital of the world. Yeah. It was the what? The pharmaceutical. Pharma pharmaceutical. Oh, pharmaceutical. Yeah. pharmaceutical. And, and, and telco before. <coughs> it was yeah. telco and pharmaceutical. I mean, you had Bell uh, Labs. You had all the uh, situation yeah. in different parts of the state. And pharmaceutical was completely over there. Right. Um, you know, people talk about, you know, we were talking about those cities. What about Princeton? You know, you were in West. You we were, were in West, West Windsor, and we we're in uh, Lawrenceville, which is right next to it. And Princeton Borough and Township are ideal locations for development. Have been for a long time. Uh, as you may know, there's a hospital being relocated downtown, and there's a lot of growth that there. But but that's a great example, Michael, of a suburban setting driven by a particular very prestigious, obviously, university um, that has facilitated opportunities that didn't previously exist. And we happen to have the Route One corridor. Talking to Bob about the retail situation. Mm -hmm. I think Bob's 100% correct. The vacancy levels in New Jersey, because we didn't overbuild, we didn't, you know, completely go suburban sprawl couldn't everywhere, get the approvals. and couldn't get the <laughs> approvals, yeah. uh, is partly why we're sustaining ourselves on some of those situations from the retail. Office is clearly under a lot of pressure. Industrial hasn't moved the, the, not, the needle no, I, I mean, I did a show about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, and I had all the industrial guys from New Jersey. You know, it's been a, a good market because of the roads and because of the ports and other, other things, but it's not not an easy market today in, in the, the It happens to be the third largest industrial market in the country at 775,000 square, 775 million square feet of space. Um, and historically been very difficult for outsiders to get involved with. It's been, but of course, from a distribution perspective, it's where everyone's wanted to be, only because where we sit between yeah. uh, uh, Boston yeah. and Washington. Uh, what ended up happening was to the northern part of the state, mm, exit 10 and north on the turnpike for those that are unfamiliar basically towards the northern part into the port and the Meadowlands that's always been competition constrained you couldn't get in there no way no how exit 8a which developed around sort of national owners that wanted to get in and got in actually on the late side which expanded from a 30 odd million square foot market to 58 million square feet now finds itself 20 percent vacant one of the issues being companies that want to locate out to Pennsylvania because it's more appealing or was more appealing even with the transportation costs to go. You, you, you know, you bring up Pennsylvania. I was reading something. I mean, Pennsylvania has like become the gambling casino. I mean, not casino, slots all over Pennsylvania. I mean, I did a show a couple of years ago, and I had Jimmy Kuhn and his partner, Barry Gossin. I mean, yeah. Bethlehem Steel is, is yeah. slots, and then uh, the Poconos is slots mm -hmm. and all the rest. Uh, and Atlantic City is still the pits. I mean, the, the, the bay, okay, but, it's not doing well. I mean, that's a city that should have done well, the first really uh, situation. Uh, that's surprising. I, 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 I agree with you. I don't understand it either. Well, I think a little color is, leaded, uh, is needed. Atlantic City's challenge because it didn't have diversity. At the end of the day, 30-plus years ago, I think it was, 76, mm -hmm. when I recall, was when the gaming bill was adopted and Atlantic City found You were itself. around? You were, I, I was a youngster. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> uh, but that's when it started, and I think some of us back Back, not back then, but people then and now said we need to get some diversity. And, you know, it has had a tremendous amount of capital investment over the last 20 years, and even as recently as the last five years, in fact. But for economic reasons and for comp competitive reasons, as you alluded to, Michael, it's much more challenged. Atlantic County and that corridor mm. needs to diversify. And there's people that are out there trying to do that and force that issue going forward. And, you know, I am a North, a North Jersey person, as I think most of us here are today. There should be, as it has been historically, the South-North Jersey split. It needs to be much more of a cohesive state economically like and federation. Uh, now, I'm not going to have the Mason-Dixon line <laughs> below and above, but that's true. It that way it's, sometimes. Uh, but it should. Yeah, and and yeah. on a going forward basis, I think both in the legislature and maybe in the gubernatorial world, it's gone away from now, that. Now, now I'm going to make, make it really nice. The New York City banks aren't really lending money, but the New Jersey banks are lending money. What happened? I mean, uh, they're healthy. Honestly, there there are many banks in New Jersey that are healthy. They're I mean, just, I mean uh, money is available in New Jersey. I, when I heard long. recently that um, uh, Inter, um, what's the one? Uh, the one in California? Or no, no, the, the one in New Jersey. Uh, inv investors, in investors, investors, investors <laughs> has made thirty million, forty million dollar loans on the, their own. I mean, in order to do a thirty million dollar loan in New York, you need three banks to yeah. participate over here. Well, you know, so. There are there is money for certain developments. What ended up happening being out in Jersey, where we really didn't have the boom that Manhattan had in some other markets, 
you didn't have this sort of you know, runaway sort of speculative fervor if you were actually, unfortunately or fortunately, an office building owner in the state of New Jersey the last seven years. There hasn't been any What happens is for New Jersey office building owners, what, what they do is, you know, it depends. You see, if you're Jewish, you would sit shiva. If, <laughs> if, 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 if you were Catholic, uh, okay, you would go to the wake. I mean, there was no reason to own buildings. I mean, so as a practical matter, it was a fairly sleepy place. We did manage right. to transact a lot of business, notwithstanding that. We didn't but a lot of as much capital. A lot of a lot of the local banks basically were unable to compete with, say, the CMBS market mm -hmm. or life company lenders and so forth. So you have a number of healthy, smaller to medium-sized lenders that are now active. But I think in addition to that, the people who are developing in New Jersey have always stayed close to the banks in New Jersey. Yes. So they Very didn't much rely on the international right. lenders. Yeah. So those people are still there. But I think I it's mean, also because we're not institutionalized. Yeah. You know, we are the only REIT, residential REIT, really operating in New Jersey with an office in New Jersey. Other REITs own property, but they don't have the presence that we have, the office, the development capability. And, you know, when you compare it to other markets, we are just not an institutional market, which we think works in our favor, by mm. the way. And it fragments mm. the financial sources because now many different banks can deal with many different developers, yeah. whereas in New York it gets more concentrated. So if somebody, what's the best place for future development in New Jersey? First, I think everybody should stay out of New Jersey and leave it up to us. <laughs> Boy, okay, I, like I, like I, I like this. You know, yeah, yeah, somebody, right. you know, it's, uh, I want to control. This is my control. I drive the show, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I think the answer Strike to that question that. is, <laughs> the answer to the question is clearly the opportunities are in urban cores for a whole host of reasons. Yeah. Approvals are available, first of all. Infrastructure <laughs> challenge and needs improvements are available. And, and Brian and I alluded to some of the, the legislation. There is now, you're going to love these acronyms, the ERG, the Economic Redevelopment Growth Grant available, which, by the way, in parlance is TIF financing, tax increment financing, much more expanded. There's an urban yeah. transit tax of credit available. I heard about that. But, but, but it's in nine cities. But in addition to that, there is a, there's a trend for people wanting to be in urban areas. They want to be near restaurants. They want to be, look at Montclair, where you just developed the Siena. We built the project. And they the, want to be there. They the, want to have 90 restaurants. 90% of they want people theater. who would live in that building yeah. are not previous multifamily owners. Yeah. 85 people have moved in out of 100. We only have about 15 left. And we recently surveyed all of them and asked them. We have a few New Yorkers and a few people from other multifamily and back. Everybody else came see, from a single you, family. You see, if you, if you really wanted, you'd go to the New Jersey Public Broadcasting and you'd tell them to bring my show over to the state of New Jersey in addition because we really can't talk about New Jersey in 30 minutes. But I think you, the four of you have really helped and uh, my viewers and I enjoyed what we've gained today. I'd like to thank Gary Gabriel, uh, Bob Ambrosi, Brian Stolar, not Stoller, and Ron Liddell. Uh, next week, we move from New Jersey to uh, the hospitality in the region. See you next week. Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from Bank of America and Perfect Building Maintenance, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, New York Community Bank, Kilroy Metal Products, New York's Window Company, Capital One Bank. Additional funding for this program is made possible by grants from Akron Gold Brothers, LLC, Briarwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, First American Title Insurance Company of New York, F.J. Siami, Friedman, LLP, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, James D. Kuhn, Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Madison Realty Capital, Meridian Capital Group, M&T Bank, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Must Development, Newmark Knight Frank, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Des Moines Group, Urban American, W Financial Mortgage Fund. Music